Hi all, this is Children's Librarian Diana over at John Germain Library. Welcome to the first session of Chapter 1 Read Alouds uh, that I will be providing for you every Tuesday. Each week I will be reading the first chapter of a new juvenile chapter book that we have in the library. And for our first session, I am going to be reading the book Don't Turn Out the Lights. And this is a tribute to Alvin Schwartz's Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. So if you like horror, this book might be for you. And this is by Jonathan Mayberry. And we are granted permission from HarperCollins Publisher. Chapter One. Terror was about to infect the kingdom and panic spread like a virus. Queen Benevola balanced on the edge of death and her only child, Malvino Mandamus, was next in line. He would become king. As intensely as the kind queen was beloved, her demonic son, Mandamus, was despised. But the royal family wielded the power. Nothing could be done. Or so everyone believed. Senora Alma's acclaimed lineage reached as far back as the royal families. She and her ancestors performed one solemn duty, painting the royal funeral portraits. And so, on her deathbed, knowing her long life was at its end, Queen Benevola summoned the revered portrait artist to fulfill her task. Supported by a simple wooden cane and wrapped in a black shawl, the reclusive painter dutifully arrived at the, at the palace to create the painting. Tales of old wrinkled Senora Alma and her accomplished legacy spanned generations. Some said she was 100 years old, maybe even two. No matter her true age, she was distinctly skilled and painted the queen's funeral portrait with unparalleled speed. For just as Senora Alma applied her last dab of pigment to the canvas, the queen exhaled her last breath. How fortunate. Senora Alma said, I was able to paint her while she was still alive. Queen Benevola's remains rested in the Galleria, a long hall with carved paneling and trembling candlelight. Most striking were the life-sized oil paintings. Centuries of royal funeral portraits that lined the walls of the gallery like a timeline of compassion, occasionally punctured by tyranny, all with penetrating painted eyes. At the end was the funeral portrait of the queen's father, King Tirano, a despot who had ruled with vicious cruelty. His seething glare was chilling, even if only caught on canvas. But next to that above her casket, now hung Queen Benevola's glorious funeral portrait, an uncanny likeness. While the folds of her turquoise gown had the illusion of being true velvet and the rubies of her crown looked like the reflected actual flame, the rendering of the queen herself stole one's breath. It was as if pulsing blood flowed through her applied pigments of her skin and a vivid spirit shone through the painted gaze. When Senora Alma arrived in the Galleria to pay her last respects, the gathered nobility and commoners showed the legendary painter with praise. You are too kind, Senora Alma admired her masterpiece. I simply attempt to replicate it and paint what I glean from the person's soul. A noble woman scowled up at the portrait of King Tirano. You certainly gleaned what was in him, she shuddered. It's as if the painting stares through me. Senora Alma frowned at the portrayal of the previous king that she had painted so many years before. I captured him all too well, didn't I? A commanding voice boomed through the Galleria. Where's that woman? Everyone turned. It was the newly crowned King Malvino Mendamis himself. Strutting beside him was his 11 year old son, Prince C C Consentito, who had the eyes of his grandmother, but the bearing of his father. Senora Alma, the new King Madamus barked, the way you've painted my mother is impressive. He put his hands on his hips. You will paint my portrait. The crowd gasped. Everyone knew the old proverb. It was per per perilous to have one's funeral portrait painted when one was in their prime. 
Prince Consentito interrupted. What about me? I want a portrait too. Quiet, Mandamus shoved his son away. I'm the king. But King Mandamus, a groveling court minister said, what about the fate of your grandfather, King Toronto? He had Senora Alma paint his portrait when he was young. And look what happened. It brought the curse. A slight grin started to light on Senora Alma's face, but she quickly extinguished it and resumed her somber expression. You think I believe that stupidity? King Mandamus said. When my likeness hangs in this hall someday, it shall resemble me now when I'm young and handsome, not when I'm old and sickly. He waved his hand up at Queen Benevola's portrait. Senora Alma bowed at l as low as her elderly bo bones would allow. Sire, I cannot break from my family's tradition and will paint your funeral portrait only once. To capture you in your full glory, I must first observe what kind of ruler you will be. King Mandamus huffed, then glanced up at his mother's portrait. Her painted amber eyes sparked, no doubt merely a reflection of flickering candlelight. I'll be the greatest ruler, you'll see. Return in a year's time and be prepared. He spun on his heel and left with Prince Consentito pouring behind him, pouting behind him. In the course of that year, King Mandamus wasted no time in unleashing his brutality. If someone looked at him the wrong way, he plucked out their eyes. If offended by someone's words, he extracted their teeth, one by one, and then their tongue. Fear and horror billowed through the kingdom like smoke. While King Mandamus carried out his increasingly savage acts, Senora Alma continued honing her enigmatic craft. As it had always been for generations of her family, no one was allowed to enter her studio. Her methods were secret. Canvas after canvas of life-size animal portraits encircled the humbled space. None were of noble pets or well-bred street steeds, as one might expect. Instead, they were strikingly realistic represent representations of common sewer rats and rabid raccoons, all with a spark in their painted eyes. In the center of the room rested a battered cage containing the still warm carcass of a bloodthirsty coyote, its just completed portrait looming on an easel nearby. The legendary artist never practiced by painting people, the reason known only to her. When the year passed, Senora Alma arrived at the palace bringing art materials, a weathered easel, and an enormous black canvas. King Mandamus glared from the summit of his throne. You shall paint my portrait this time. At that, guards stepped forward in union and surrounded her, their swords clanking against their armor. Senora Alma placed her cane to the side. As you wish, your highness. It is clear to all what kind of ruler you have become, and so I shall gladly capture your likeness. The entire court gathered as Senora Alma stood still and closed her eyes. While she took slow breaths and watching crowds held theirs, suddenly her eyes flashed open, focused on the king. Without breaking her gaze, she thrust out her hand laying her fingers across her brushes the way a musician tests the keys of a harpsichord. Selecting a bold brush, she began painting the curve of his shoulder. When the pigment-tipped brush touched the blank canvas, the king twitched and slapped his shoulder. As a slight numbness spread down his arm, he suspected a bee had stung him, but he held his pose. A king isn't bothered by an insignificant bee. However, as Senora Alma continued, the king faltered. Why, just as the master painter applied the perfect rose tones to the canvas, the king's rosy cheeks paled. And as she dabbed crimson on the lips of his depiction, King Mandamus's own mouth began to blend away into increasingly sallow complexion. Murmurs spread. Look, he's cursed for having his portrait painted too soon. The onlookers gasped, just like his grandfather. Senora Alma smiled to herself. This enduring false rumor of a curse masked, masked the truth and served her well. She alone knew the power she possessed. I'm fine, the king protested when asked about his health.
but something wasn't right. Increasingly drained of his vitality, he knew no bee sting could have this effect. It sent a shiver through his heart. Was it poison? A plague? No matter what, he could display no weakness. He knew any hint of vulnerability would be his end. His enemies would pounce. Now delusional, he had feared his own son, Prince Consentito might snatch the throne. But the young prince only gaped in confusion. Father, is it the curse? You must stop. Paranoid and suspecting a trick, King Mandamus flapped his hand at Senora Alma. Quick, old woman, paint swiftly. I want this finished. She stood tall. Certainly, your highness. I'm sure we all want this finished. The faster she progressed, the more rapidly the king faded. Fortunately, Senora Alma was able to complete his portrait just in time. For as she applied two last stabs of paint to the pupils of his eyes, he slumped to the ground. Dead. Trembling with shock, Prince Constantino approached his father's funeral portrait. Something about the painting's lifelike gaze pulled at him, almost against his will. Senora Alma placed a surprisingly firm hand on the boy's shoulder and whispered, Your Majesty, we will be eagerly observing. What kind of ruler will you be? As the boy stared at the painting, a small drop of red paint puddled in the rim of the portrait's right eye, then ran down the flat cheek like a teardrop of blood. I wonder when I will paint you, Senora Alma said, searching the boy's face. When shall I capture your soul? And that is the end of chapter one. If this book intrigued you, you can place a hold on it through our catalog at johngermain.org or you can email holds, H-O-L-D-S, at johngermain.org and ask to place a reservation on this book to pick up through our Plaza Pickup or during a grab-and-go appointment. Hope you all enjoyed.